Now this scatter plot has obvious curvature, but if we were gonna try to fit a least squares regression line, maybe something like this. Now at 300 centimeters, all the actual sharks appear to be under the model line I just drew. That means the model would over predict their weight. So we'll say over predict as most of the points at 300 fall under our model line. Let's look through the residual plots and determine which transformations achieved linearity. Now in this first residual plot, we see something called fanning. You can see that the general pattern of the residuals looks like that. That means for sharks with small total lengths, the model performs quite well. But as the shark lengths increase, the absolute value of the residuals increases. That means the model's not working as well. So transformation one did not achieve linearity. In transformation two, there's a pattern in the residuals. So this means our model can be improved on. So transformation two did not achieve linearity either. The third transformation shows a pretty much random scatter throughout the residual plot. This one, I suspect, did achieve linearity. And transformation four has the same problem transformation two does. It's got a pattern in the residuals. So we'll write linearity achieved as the residuals show random scatter and no fanning. And we'll draw an arrow so everyone knows we're talking about transformation three. Now we're gonna use each of these transformations to predict the weight of a 300 centimeter shark. So on our first transformation, we need to substitute in 300 and then cube it. So we'll type 300 and we'll cube it. Now we need to multiply it by this coefficient. And finally, we have to add in our y-intercept. All right, our prediction for transformation one is 165.09 kilograms. On the second transformation, we have to multiply our 300 by this coefficient. Next, we add the y-intercept. 0.254. All right, so we have the log of our weight has to equal 2.174. Now what this means is 10 raised to the 2.174 power is going to equal the weight of our shark. So all we need to do is raise 10 to 2.174. All right, transformation two predicts the shark will be about 149.28 kilograms. All right, on our third transformation, we need to take the log of 300. So I'll type log and 300, and we need to multiply this by the coefficient. Then add in our y-intercept. Okay, and just like transformation two, I need to raise 10 to this power since this gives us the log of the weight. All right, this model predicts the shark will be 156.6 kilograms approximately. Our last model, we have to take the square root of 300. Then multiply it by our coefficient and add in our y-intercept. All right, this model predicts the shark will be about 185.99 kilograms. If we go back to our original scatter plot, sharks that were around 300 centimeters in total length seem to have weights between about 130 and 180 kilograms. Also, if we mark off where 300 or its equivalent transformed value is on each of our residual plots, it correlates to where residuals were quite small, near zero. So all four of these models are potentially quite accurate for sharks of length 300. But which model would work for sharks between zero and 400 centimeters? I'd put my money on transformation three, since that model seems to predict equally well throughout the shark lengths. 
So we'll say all the models have predictions near the actual shark weights for sharks that were near 300 centimeters in length. Also, the residuals were quite small at 300 centimeters, or the transformed equivalent. But Transformation 3 probably does the best job for other shark lengths, not just the 300.